Hello and welcome back to a mini series on science and whiskey. Um, the motivation for doing this uh, mini series uh, comes from my own uh, way of doing uh, these reviews uh, or the whiskey reviews. Um, there's a lot of homo homeopathy, crystal laying, star sign, creationism like uh, opinions regarding whiskey uh, and the way to taste whiskey, the way to understand whiskey. Um, but I want to treat these questions from a, from a more scientific point of view. Um, I, will, I will try to avoid too many I think and I feel uh, answers and instead rely on, on, on real world empirical evidence uh, or at least reasonable assumptions. Um, we'll be talking about uh, whiskey and glassware, we'll be talking about uh, nosing and tasting um, and, uh, and a lot of other stuff. But in this uh, first series, let's talk about the glassware. Um, the basic assumption here is that um, the shape of the glass affects the taste and the smell of the whiskey. Well, if we're going to start with the taste, I mean, no matter what type of glass uh, that you have or you're using, uh, it, it will not affect the taste. I personally can't find any evidence at all or even uh, think of a reasonable scenario uh, where, where that statement could be true. Um, I, I think I'll leave it at that. There's, there's actually no more to be said in this, this, this discussion. No more to be said in this discussion. Because um, th th there is no evidence out there. I, ha I have seen suggestions about, uh, or some homeopathy-like opinions about uh, water memory and stuff like that. Uh, but it's pure wishy-washy, and uh, it's it, it's not it's not real science. Um, whiskey would will taste the same no matter what glass you're using. Simple as that. Now, regarding the, the smell, um, I can't actually find any evidence suggesting that the smell of a whiskey is different in one glass compared to another. I'm, I'm not saying that the evidence aren't out there in, uh, somewhere, uh, but um, I haven't seen it, and if anyone has seen it, uh, I, would like to, uh, I would really like to take a look at it. Uh, but, but, um, let me read my notes. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess it's, I guess it's possible that the shape of the glass could, in some way, affect the smell. Uh, I mean, one could imagine a scenario where some molecules are trapped. Uh, due to the curved shape of the glass, or something like that. Something like that. Um, I'm not saying that it is so, uh, and I'm not saying that it isn't so. It's an agnostic point of view. But uh, at least I can't find any evidence suggesting uh, neither of the things. Uh, but what does have an effect is the surface area of the glass, not the shape. Uh, a, a larger surface area um, means a higher evaporation rate and thus more mo molecules are reaching your nose um, and you will uh, get even a, a richer experience or an alcohol burn. Um, so the surface area definitely has an effect. Uh, a lot of us are using you know, a tumbler like this when we are knocking back whiskey, at least when we're knocking back whiskey with coke or something like that. Um, and a lot of people are using something like this, a real whiskey tasting glass. So why, why do we use it? Is there any reason why we should use this glass instead of, let's say, this glass or this glass? Hmm? 
there is and there is actually a, a scientific uh, reason why we should use this glass instead of one of these. One of the factors in being scientific is to eliminate variables. So when we are nosing and tasting our whiskey, our circumstances has to, or to, to the highest degree possible, uh, be similar. Uh, if I am to compare my tasting notes with a guy from Glasgow, uh, these notes would potentially be a little more accurate uh, if our glass, or at, least, or at least the surface area of our glasses, is alike. Um, so, my conclusion is that the surface area of the glass will have an effect when you're nosing a whiskey. Uh, and the shape may or may not have an effect. Uh, but the shape, including the surface area, is a key point in eliminating variables and being scientific when you're nosing a whiskey. And, uh, and nosing is my keyword to the next uh, whiskey science talk, uh, which will be... A little talk on nosing and tasting. Hope I'll see you there. And this is the part where I noticed that I sounded like an obnoxious bastard. Uh, which really wasn't the point of this video. Uh, the main point of this video and the rest of the science series are not to discredit or debunk the way the majority of people are tasting uh, and sharing the knowledge about whiskey. Um, it would be inappropriate of me to, to even suggest that with my limited scientific background, which does not even include chemistry or any other natural science useful in this context, uh, that, that I could tell you, you what is true or false. I certainly don't have all the answers, but out of my love for science and whiskey in general comes the motivation for searching for these answers. Um, but there will be no answers without questions, and I think that in the search for, for knowledge, uh, a lot of fruitful questions can be asked. Questions like, uh, is this assumption based on tradition, hearsay, or even a myth? Or is it based on a testable theory which has proven again and again to be a solid theory due to continuous falsification attempts? I mean, these are some of the questions that I ask myself when I'm looking through um, the wasteland of information regarding whiskey or any other topic in the world uh, that I want to know more of. So really, the main point of this science series is to ask critical questions. Uh, thank you for watching and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye bye.